Good Vok Raboy Sai. Ah, Lilian Yishma Simi Miros Hirus Bas Mordechai. We just got the, the very, very terrible news that one of our Bnei Chabura, somebody that sat on this table from the beginning, he was with the Shir for close to four years, was Nifter today, Rav Shimi Weiss. So the Levaya is tonight at uh, the Veshem Cemetery at midnight. The Neshama should have an Aliyah. His son just came over Friday to give me an update and everything. And wow, unbelievable. Same machla that my mother had. Took him quick, very, very quick. All right, the Neshama should have an Aliyah. Um, Eli Ginot, Rebelli, just a quick update. I'm the kid who asked for your advice about going to camp. I Baruch Hashem got accepted to camp Romamu. I'm super excited and a little nervous. I want to thank you for the chizit. P.S. When I had my interview, the rabbi mentioned he spoke to someone at MDY. That was me. And that they might put a screen in the camp. I'm hoping it works out. Thank you again for everything that you do. I spoke to Rabbi Pfeiffer himself. And Rabbi Pfeiffer asked for a screen. So Beis Hashem will have one of those screens that have our technology that you can't break into with Beis Hashem. It's going to show the shiurim. I'm sure there's a bunch of guys in Camp Romu that do the shir. So Beis Hashem, Camp Romu, other camps are taking it as well. If you're interested, let us know. My daughter is the Benos Malka of Queens and the Menahal, the Menahal, Rabbi Waxelbaum, came down for lunch and started with good morning Rabbi Isai and stopped and asked anyone, if anyone knows the rest, my daughter raised her hand and said loudly and proudly, ah, my daughter was so happy she came home and told me Rabbi Waxelbaum does the daf with the rebelli, Yaakov Nisana. Oh, over here we have a picture of Rav Avram. Is he here? No, he's not here. No. I don't see anybody. Here's a photo of Rav Avram learning of the rebelli today on his flight to Yisrael. He's hoping to be by the Shia Motsi Shabbos or Sunday. Please recognize him and give him a mokam aroi to reduce the shyness. He's the one who introduced me and others to the Meaningful Minute video and from that day I'm hooked. Yankel Cohen. Yishkoyach. L'chvoy, the Rav, Agoyen, Amakubal, Chusid, the Gra, Top World Pilot, Tesla, Porsche, etc. First of all, I thank you for the amazing share you give with such a geschmack. makes tons of sense because it's geschmack to the Dav. Beis Siva was the arts of my grandmothers. The kids said, Shtibol, Dav, and didn't have a Kaddish. Went outside, saw two random boys. Asked one of them to come and make a minion. No problem. And then as the kid walked away, one guy said to the other, don't forget to do the Dav. So I asked him, who do you do the Dav with? He said, of course, Rebelli. I told him I also did the Dav. Whole schmooze, MDY. We mamish felt like friends. Now every time we see each other, we make sure to wave. Anybody have one of those Jeeps in America? You know, you know the, the wave? Yeah, all right. The wave, the MDY, what's the MDY wave you all say? It's a certain wave, okay. <laughs> the wave, the wave. Ah, the, the wave, okay, fine. As a Tzadik group, Yisrael Goldstein says, Mi kamchem di wave in Yisrael. Thank you so much for the amazing share. I was in Shul the other day, I overheard a guy saying, why does Rebelli use American names like Five Town Lady? Why not English places like Manchester Lady? LOL. Bahava, Cheska Moshe Kosk, Manchester. Oh, another guy from Manchester. I'm based in Manchester, I go to local Shir. I watch you for Chizik Yishmak, brings the daf alive. I'm going to be coming to Eretz Yisrael from Wednesday till Monday, staying in Yerushalayim. Is there anyone with a car who's based in Yerushalayim and drives to the Shir and back? I'd love to attend in person if possible. What? You want to pick him up? Psh, MDY. Nah, there's plenty of people that come from your slime every day. We have to, I don't know how to figure it out. On the app, on the app. As you love surnames, mine is unique. I'm, I'm called Zev Ritvo. No relation to the Ritvo. Zev Ritvo, okay. Somebody get him a ride. Rabbi Isai, figure out the ride for him. The Koilel is sponsored. La Hatzloch, Olakol Mishpach, MDY. The parents of Chodesh, Aaron Frame, and Luzchus continue to parallel the Yadish Mayan as of the rebelli. By the Lagan Lubbock families, like New Jersey, because Toyra is as Gula. Parents of Chodesh, Lunishmas Chay Bas Yosef, Mishpachas Goldberg. That's how he's pronounced it, Goldberg. Lunishmas, Harab Zundul, Ben Rav Yosef Chaim Alter, Talmud of Chavetz Chaim, and also it's the yard side of the Stipler. It's the yard side of the Stipler now? Really? Yeah, I remember. It was Ben Ismanim. 
Mistake. It's not the Yerusha this type of Redo. I was at the Levaya. I remember I was in camp and I had to come. Oh, if you look at the screen, that's Shimmy Weiss. Whoever doesn't know who he is, that's what he is. He's a, what? 1230. All right. We'll be able to prepare a little bit for tomorrow. He had a great sense of humor. He put it together with the daf. He always cracked a good joke here. I'll tell you guys a story that he told me at a different time, not now. Great story. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if it's, I'll just say it now, but okay, is it, uh, I don't want to take away from the, he told me that he moved to Florida and he was looking for the daf. He wanted to do the daf right away. So he asked somebody, he knew what time is daf on Shabbos? They said five o'clock. He says, five o'clock? That's crazy. Okay, fine, I'll go to the street at five o'clock. He told his wife, his wife said, listen, you knew in the community, if you have to go five o'clock, you go five o'clock. So he said, what, what's the address? <laughs> they tell him the address. He walks to the guy's house at five o'clock in the morning and nobody's there. So he sits down. A guy comes out with a baseball bat <laughs> in his pajamas. So what are you doing? He says, isn't it? No, you idiot. It's five o'clock by Mincha. Oh, okay. Welcome to the community. <laughs> Anyways, that was Jimmy Weiss. Okay. Yes. What? Rabbi Shochet, Shalom Aleichem. How you doing? What's your name? Shmuel Shochet, how you doing? Who else is here? Oh, the Brody Boys. Shkoyach. What's your first name again? Shafsi. Shafsi from Lakewood also? Fields, New York. Fields. Next to Lakewood. Next to Lakewood. Next to Lakewood. Lakewood. But you're, you're used to be from uh, Lakewood, no? No. Who's from Lakewood? Somebody. There's another Lakewood. You're not. You're partner from Lakewood. What's it? Huh? Oh, what's your name? Yarkoni? Shalom Aleichem. From, you are from Lakewood now? Shh. Lakewood has to sit over here. Come, Rabbi Yarkoni, get over here. Come here. A guy from Lakewood, unbelievable. So we have two guys from Lakewood. What? And you also? You used to be from Lakewood. No, I was new guest. New? I, I remember, but what? Also Lakewood. So what's your name from Lakewood? Leif Schreiber. Leif Schreiber. Schreiber, Schreiber. I got half. Now I have the whole thing. Right, you're, but you are from Lakewood, and you're from Lakewood. Three guys from Lakewood, Givaldic. Okay, we're so all those days that we missed last week, we could just take out those guys. Okay, Givaldic. Rabbi Sai, here we go. We're by the Mishnah on Daf Tzadik Vav Omid Aleph. You'll see why I was late today when you see these charts. Omruloi Mesa Ishtacha Venosa Achoyso Meyevia. They have a there's a Givaldic Akasha in Chagadia. The question is, the cat ate the goat. So the cat is a bad guy, right? So then the, the dog is a good guy. Yeah? And if you keep on going, it comes out that a Baruch Hu, it doesn't work out. So what's the pshat? The, 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 the dog had a right to bite the cat because... The cat killed the goat, so uh, everything is good. What's the so the answer is so basically you should do goat, dog, fire. You know, just keep on going. The answer. What's the answer? Anybody know the answer? Dog's a bad guy because the dog shouldn't have mixed in. It's none of his business. Fine. Over well, here we have something similar to Chagad. <laughs> you have a bunch of people here. Let me show you the. Oh, take a look. This is one of the largest charts in terms of people. And this chart is all the way from Daphne and Dalit, actually. And if you remember, Yoshi did it through Fua. His daughter was having a procedure. His Baruch Hashem went well. So we're starting from left to right, not right to left. And it goes like this. There's a woman, there's, the man Besul in between was married to two women. Mazel and Badayin. So... Basically, the, the, woman all the, way to, the woman all the way to the left had a daughter. And you could see that the daughter, Yoshi did a great job here, looked similar to the mother, but similar to the father also, black skirt, the whole thing. That guy, Basuel, had another daughter, Rivka. She's the second wife. So now you look at Ruvain for a second. Ruvain marries the first woman on the bottom. The woman next to her is a half-sister. She's not allowed to marry her. You're not allowed to marry two sisters, even if they're half. 
Then he went ahead and he married a third woman. The third woman is a half-sister to the second one. Every single woman here is a half-sister to the one before. But they're not related at all. So again, one, three, and five. Don't lose me here. One, three, and five are not related. One and two are related. Two and three are related. Three and four are related. Four and five are related. But one, three, and five are not related. So when Ruvi married one, he had no business marrying two. So two, the, never, he was never married to two. Then he went ahead and married three. That's a good kiddushin. Yeah? Is everybody with me? Not that difficult. So what happens is he's really married to one, three, and five, like in this picture. And the, the other two women, they just go away. So, let's see inside. It's very, very simple, just a lot of words. They tell him, your wife died. So, based on that information, he went ahead. He married her half-sister. In this case, she's called Rivka. First he was married to Malka, then she married Rivka. If you see, Rivka is a daughter of Batayin. That's why she has a Batayin shirt on. But also the black skirt of her father, Besuel. Yeah? Malka is a daughter of Besuel and Mazel. Okay. It's hard to see. Is there any way to blow it up a little bit? Oh. So let's start over. If you go all the way to the left, all the way to the left. Mazel and Besuel had a daughter by the name of Malka. He married Malka. They told him that Malka went bye-bye like this. So he went ahead and he married Malka's half-sister. He's allowed to marry Malka's half-sister if his wife went bye-bye. What? Oh, that's a good one. Control L. Here we go. He went ahead and he married this lady right over here, which is, first he married her. And they told him that she died. But we'll find out she never died. So since she never died, then he wasn't allowed to marry her half-sister. Why is she half-sister? They share a father. Different mother. Here's her mother. See the shirt matches. Here's her mother. The shirt matches. Okay. Then they said, They said that this lady died. Number two dies. And she went and she married the five-town woman that has same shirt as her because she's a daughter of Batayin, five-towner. Different five-towner. We'll call it the Ma- This is a Manchester lady. You ask for Manchester lady, here you go. It's a shtickle, interesting. She's wearing the bat iron leggings and sandals with white socks. And, but she goes shopping in Manchester. Okay. From where? Broughton Park. Okay. She, he's only allowed to marry this third lady if his second wife died. Then they said that this lady died, so he went ahead and married the real five-towner, which is only a half-sister. Then they said that she died, number four died, he married five. Okay. You can leave me in small for, for now. Okay, so he went and married a sister from the mother, only for the half a sister, Mesa, that one died, and then he married another half-sister, Mesa, Venasa, Achoisa, Meima. It turns out that Malka never died. And therefore, Ruved had no business getting married to Malka's half-sister. But he was allowed to marry the center one, number three. But he was not allowed to marry number four because number four is the sister of the center one and the center one was still alive. It was a bad rumor. But he was allowed to marry number five. So... Who is he married to now? One, three, and five. Two and four are not his wives. So what's the halacha? Mutar berishayno ubashlishis ubachamishis. He's permitted to remain married to one, three, and five. Upoitrois tzarisayim. Let me ask you a quick question. How could he be married to number three when he had relations with number two and two and three are sisters? You know how to be married to two sisters. Anybody? Oh, because his relationship with two was Tamznus, and the Torah says, Rashi brings the Pasuk. Let's see if I have it here. No. 
Uh, it has to be. Is that me? Yeah. Interesting. Let's see. Let's get out of here. No, it's not me. It's somebody up there, I think. Maybe it is. Yoshi, I'm in the middle of a share now. And you're live on camera. Go on YouTube. But if you could help me out for tomorrow, it'd be great. Zai gesund. Bye. <laughs> no, I asked him that if I go to Levi and everything, I need help with the charts. What? Yeah. And most people know not to call me, right? Besides my brother. But he's in America. Okay. What's the puzzle here, real quickly? Anybody find it? Um, what? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. Okay, fine. No, no, no. We're not talking about. We're talking about. Oh, no, not not that, but close. Okay, fine. It's in Rashi here somewhere. Yeah, there's a puzzle. Rashi brings it. Mefurish. Uh, you want me to read all Rashi now? Okay, Nachman. Uh, I mean, not Menachem, Nachman. Oh, Vahavi lo kainusu mufuto. Vitanya onas isha. Muta liso bito. Dele osur toira ela choisisha. Vehechad ele tovas gedushin. Lav ishi. You're right. There's no puzzle. Okay, fine. You're not allowed to marry a woman. I'm sure there's a puzzle, but this is a, a mafuta. She's like a mafuta, says Rashi. Okay. Says the Gemara. New case. What? Huh? Oh, I didn't say what is your name? Yeah. So, uh, is this the right chart? Yeah, one, three, and five. If, let's say, Ruven goes bye-bye. I don't know if we have a picture of that. No. So if Ruven goes bye-bye, then either one of these wives, one, three, and five, could you could do Yibam or Chalitza too. They are, they are his wives. Any one of them, you could do Chalitza too, you could do Yibam, and the other, the other two go out. Vaasur, but he's not allowed to be married to Bashnia or Berevius. He's not allowed to be married to two and four. Ve'in bia sachasmem poiter sarasa. Two and four, obviously, you can't do bia and it won't work, uh, the, the yibum, and it won't work for the tsara. Vimbal ashnia lachar misasari shoyna. Now, if this is the case, that in fact, as the Gemara is going to explain, the first wife really did die. So then he went ahead and married two. So now two becomes his real wife. Three is not his wife. Four is his wife. And five is not his wife. So two and four are his wife. Three and five are not wives. Why are three and five not their wives? Because they are sisters to two and four. They can't, you can't be married to a sister. So therefore, Moto Bishni Obervias, he's Moto to two and four. Upaisus are Sayyim. If he's Yimuyabim two, Four goes out without anything. But three and five are not his wives. And Yibam doesn't work on them. Now, new halachas. Interesting enough, and I think the pshat is, the Gemara is not going to talk about these cases at all. Kemat nothing. You would expect like a whole series of Gemara. And the reason is because we already did so. So Gemara is going to jump straight to basically these halachas over here. Ben Teisha Shonavim Echad. A boy who's not bar mitzvah, but he's nine years old. So a nine year old, Biyasai Biya, his Biya is considered a Biya. But he doesn't have the ability to be kind of woman. He can't be Makadish a woman. He can't be married. A nine year old can't be Makadish. On the flip side, if a woman is married to a man, a Gadol, and she has relations with a nine year old, she's Aisha Sis, she's Chayav Misa. So in other words, the nine-year-old's bia is real bia, but he doesn't have the ability to be miyabim and to be kind of a woman. So that's the dilemma here. It's a funny lashon. 
it could say, like in Hebrew, it's not real Hebrew. In Hebrew, it would say, Paisa le'achim. There would be like a lama there. Basically, it means that he has the ability to make it also for the brothers to be miyabim. In other words, if there are two brothers that are available to perform yibum, and the nine-year-old jumps in and does yibum, it's not a real yibum, but it's enough to make the other brother usher on the yavama. And the brothers have the ability to ruin it for him. Ella, who The only way, and the Gemara is going to explain exactly what it means, the only way he could do it is if he's first in line. Then his bio works. But a brother, let's say the katan goes ahead and miyabim this woman, and then another brother goes ahead and miyabim. So that the, the gadol brother ruins it for the katan, even though the katan was first, and he's miyabim this yivama. Ketzad, how does it work? A nine-year-old did yibam, pasal, he ruins it for the brothers. The brothers can't do yibam anymore. Let's say, and that's what the Gemara is going to describe, that the whole thing is talking about maimer also. The, the brothers did maimer. What's maimer? You see, that's something now, 99% of us know what it is. In the beginning of Sefta, not so many knew. Maimer is when one of the Yevamim gives money, Kedushin. It doesn't work with the Raisa, but it works with the Rabbanon. They did either Maimer, a get. Does a get work with the Raisa? No. But it's similar to Chalitza, so it works. So they can ruin it for the cotton. If they do a Maimer, they do Chalitza, they do a get. Says the Gemara. In the second part of the Mishnah, it says, Vimbala Shnia, right? It's smack in the middle of the Mishnah. Vimbala Shnia, second case. If he marries a second wife, it was this case right over here. Where was it? <coughs> yeah. If his wife dies, Vimbala Shnia, Lacha Mises Rishayna. Well, what about the beginning of the Mishnah? So the Gemara says, no. In this case, she definitely died. And that's why he's allowed to marry the second woman. But in the first case of the Mishnah, they told him that she died, but she didn't really die. And it turns out she didn't die, and that's why he's muttered to 1, 3, and 5, and 2 and 4, he's also, in this case, he's muttered to 2 and 4. Fine. That's all the Gemara for this giant chart. If you want to know more about this, go to Daphne Dal and the base. Now, Benteja Shonim. Says in the Mishnah that a nine-year-old, if he's the first one that jumps ahead and does Yibam, he ruins it for the brothers. But let's say a brother did Maimur or something else, and then the, the, the cotton comes along and does Yibam, it doesn't have an effect. A Godal did Maimur. No, it's a little weak. Comes the cotton and performs yibum pasla. His yibum is strong even after the gadol did the maimer. Says the Gemara, you're right. The Gemara doesn't take it back. He's right. Amri, be a pasal, When it comes to a cotton, his bia is strong enough to pasal. Now, we have to understand one thing for this whole sugya. Bia of a cotton is like maimer. Now, there's different levels maybe in Mimer, but it has the effect of Mimer. So, does the, Mimer after Mimer, let's say? This, huh? Nine years in yeah, nine years in a day. His Bia is considered a Bia, but not a real Deiraisa one. So, he wasn't kind of the Yivama. What he did was, is, in fact, it's like, it's like doing a Mimer. Like, a, like, a, like an adult doing Mimer, he did Mimer. Now, but the adult already did Mimer. His older brother was 15 years old, gave her a ring. Comes the cotton, two days later, is Miyabimer, Yibum. So that has an effect of another Mimer. And Mimer after Mimer, it ruins it for all the brothers. Ami. If he did Yibum, Yibum, Pasal Afil Basayf, even if he did it after the brother. Mimer, if the cotton, did Maimer Tchila Pasal Besayv Le Pasal? Only if he's the first one that did something, a Maimer, then it works. His Maimer at the end doesn't work. He's a Katan. Maimer's the Rabbanon. He's a Katan. So everything together doesn't do anything after 
after another brother did my apostle. How can you tell me that the bia of a cotton works when our mission says mafurish it doesn't work? It says in our mission, he has an effect in the beginning. And they have the effect even at the end. And the mission says, what's the example? It says in the Mishnah, an example that he did yibum, and it doesn't work. Says the Gemara, Chasuri Mechsur Vachitani. Every time he says Chasuri Mechsur, it's so simple. It's not. It's not a tchak. It's lechatchilu pshat. That this is how it's pashat. And when you read the mission, this is how you understand it. Ben Tzayis Shalom Yom Echad. Who buys a tchilu? Ben Tzayis Shalom Tchilu Vesayif. The Mishnah. You have to stick in these words. In general, a nine-year-old could only have an effect in the beginning. Doesn't have effect after his brothers did something. What does it mean? The mission is talking about Maimer. Now, if this young guy, this nine-year-old, performs real Yibam, it has an effect. Even after his brother did Ketzad. So the Ketzad is not on the general rule that a cotton is only in the beginning, not at the end. The word Ketzad over here is talking about the last part, the Bia part. Ketzad, I'll explain to you. Ben Tesh, Amir Mecha, Habal Yivim Toi, Pasa Yideyachim, Yeruz is for the brothers. Even if they did a Maimer first. As the Gemara Umi Islay, Maimer Klala Yideyachim, Watanya Ben Tesh, Shana Vim Mecha. Listen to this. It says in a Braisa, Hu Paisa Badover Echad. The young guy could only ruin it for the brothers through one thing. Which is that one thing? Bia, Yibam. So it says Mufurish, he doesn't have Mimer. If you stop right here, you have a bomb question. What are you telling me that our mission is talking about a Mimer? The little guy gave a ring to the Yavama. It says Mufurish here, look. Only one way could he ruin it. And the brothers could ruin it in four ways. Who Bibia. Meaning, he doesn't have the ability to do Maimer. He can't give her a ring. It's zero. And how did the brothers ruin it for him? <coughs> so the Gemara answers, no. A katan could do Maimer. So how come it's not in the Mishnah, in the Braisa? Very posh it. I'm telling you something that I don't have to go explain. Bia. In the beginning, we do in the end, Yibum. That's how the Gemara threw out Shaz. No, threw out Shaz, that's how it, it's a physical thing, probably. Bia a It's not only in our sugh, it's everywhere. <clears throat> Fine. But the answer is the Bryce is only telling us something I don't have to go to explain, something that's a general rule. Yibum works for cotton everywhere. Whether he's the first guy in line, the last guy in line. The reason why I'm not mentioning Maimer, which actually does work, because Maimer, the B'chil Apostle, the Sifle Apostle, is only if he does it the first one in line. Leipzig, I don't want to go into it, into the details. I didn't mention it in the Braise. Idmanami. Omer Avidim Shmuel. Yesh loy get. A katan, the right to get to the Yivama, it has an effect. Why does it have an effect? Because a get is like Chalitza, Right? Chalitza, once you do Chalitza, here, possible. We learned this thread themselves many, many times. Kivin Shabana, Shuvla Yivna. If he built the house, he did Chalitza, he can't do anything else afterwards. Now, get is similar. It looks like a Chalitza. I'm getting rid of her. Do this, I'm not going to be with you anymore. <clears throat> so the guys are going to get also. Interesting, Tosis points out, when Rav Tachlifa says that a cotton has Maimer, like we're discussing now, it means he does not have a get. Okay, he can't do a get, according to Rav Tachlifa. Now this is even more interesting, because it says, He does have both, meaning, not like, Tosis knew this next time, but there's a price that says he has both. One, one man Amr Shmuel says he has get. Rav Tachlifa says he only has Maimer. And there's another man that says he has both. The Rameyer. That's Rameyer. Vesavar, Rameyer, Yeshlim, get. How could 
I'll prove to you that the mayor holds that he doesn't have a get. Why? Because it says, The yibam of a nine-year-old is like, has the same power as a maimer of a gadol, which is very weak, by the way. It's, it's something, it has an effect on the, on the yivama. The other brothers are not allowed to be miyavimer, but if they do, let's say, they're kainer. Because I mean, the, the Rabbanon, it's only the Rabbanon thing, this maimer. So this cotton's bia is like a maimer of Remeir Oimer, listen to the words. Asu chalitza's ben teisha, the chalitza of a nine-year-old is kiget begadol. What should it say? If a katan has the ability to give a yevama a get, should it say his chalitza is like his get? It doesn't say his chalitza is like his get. His chalitza is like an adult's get. So what do you see? Remeir holds that a, a, a katan cannot give a get. If a cotton could give a get, then why in the world does it say, Asu Chalitza's ben Teisha, Kiget begadol? It should say Kiget, or Kiget begadol. What's Kiget begadol? Vimisa, listen to Gita, Kigita. So you see from Remeir, he holds that a cotton cannot give a get. And he's comparing the Chalitza of a cotton to a get of an adult. Amr Avon of Rehid Yeshua, Islay Vizutar. Not true. He has a get. Just what? His get is not as powerful as an adult's get. Remeir want to say that a cotton's chalitza is so powerful, it's like an adult's get. Not like a cotton's get. A cotton's get is a lower level. What do you mean? Oh, you mean how does it work? Yeah, it only works, I mean, the Rabbanon. The whole thing is the Rabbanon. He's not a, he doesn't, he can't be Makadash a woman. And if he's Makadash a woman, it's zero. But he has the ability to at least ruin it for other people. By giving a get, now the other brothers can't do anything. That's what it means. He doesn't have the ability. He really doesn't. Anything he does is like a, it's very, very weak. But his chalitza, since chalitza is a deraisa, so it has power like an adult's get. Okay? So, what does that mean? His chalitza could work in the beginning and at the end, it works everywhere because it's very powerful like an adult's get. Okay, that's what it means. Islay Vizutor, it's his get is very weak, but we want to compare the chalitza to the stronger type of get, which is an adult's get. So what does it mean? So now the Gemara explains, what does it mean that it's weak? His get is weak, but his chalitza is very strong. So the Gemara explains, very nice. According to what Gemara says, you can't give a get after a get, right? We had all these sukkis in the beginning of Yivamas. I don't know the beginning, but it seems like months ago. If one Yavam gives a get, then a second Yavam gives a get, and they're both 25 years old, it's nothing. The second one is nothing. If two Ketanim, two nine-year-olds give a get, second get is nothing. You hear this? Givaldik. The adult's get works after a cotton's get. Why? Because when a cotton, basically what I was telling you before, when a cotton gives a get, he doesn't sever the zika completely. This is zika here between the, the yavama and the yavam. Comes a little guy, gives a get. He didn't ruin it. He, did, he left a little bit of zika there. That zika that's left over is enough for the adults, Zika, to grab on and destroy that part of the Zika. So his get is effective. There's still some, let's say, let's say a cut, just for argument. A cut, when he gives a get, he destroys 50% of the Zika, the bond that they have between, comes the God with his get and destroys the other 50%. It has something to be chalat. Hanimili, mahani works. And the Rabbanon, I mean, when Rabbanon say the second get has an effect, when then in the same level, but when there's a youngster who gives a get after the Godel gave a get, his get is a weaker get. That's what it means, Zutar. It's a weaker type of get. That's what it means. He doesn't have the power. Oh, I forgot to say that the mission is sponsored by Daron. Okay, different time. Huh? Yeah. Right now. Both Mishnahis were sponsored by their own quorum. The Zechem Nishim of my father, Uri Ben Matisio, and the Ruchnes and Gashmis of my kids. Zog Dele Yemishnah.
Oh, turning of the dove. Sponsored by Moshe Horn in honor of Hill Zen. Sponsored in honor of Eli. Thank you. Shkoyach. Ben Teisha Shonavim Mechot Shebo Al Yivim Toy. A nine year old performed evil. Ve'achikach Bo Aleo Ochiv Shu Ben Teisha Shonavim Mechot. And then another nine year old twin comes along and he performs Yibum. Poisal Ayodai. The second Yibum. Ruins it for both. As the Pasuk says, Asher lo yivne, kim shabon asher lo yivne, you can't have two, two yibum, you can't, you can't be miyavim twice. Reb Shimon oimer lo yipaisal. Reb Shimon says that, you're not, it doesn't, it doesn't passel. Why? Reb Shimon says, Mimman avshach. Mimman avshach. How do you say Mimman avshach in English? Anybody? Mimman avshach. No, I heard from, El Yochum, the guy from our Koilo, his father is a, is a big lawyer. He said so many times, like when he's in court with non-Jews, like he wants to say, Mimarav Shach, he just, like, they don't know how to learn. It's, like, it's one of those words. Mimarav Shach. Okay. Mimarav Shach. He says, Givaldik, Rav Shimon. He holds, either it works 100% or it's zero. It's not an in-between. So if it works, his, the, the cotton's yibum works 100%, so the first kid that did yibum, He's kinder. His brother came along and did Yibum, zero. And if his Yibum is a zero, so zero plus zero is zero, and they both didn't do anything, so nobody ruined it for anybody. That's what he times. Now what about the Yivama herself? The Yivama herself, she's 25 years old. She had Yibum from the first guy. And then she went ahead and she had a Yibum from the second guy. So she's Aisha Sish, put her to death. Huh? The, there is, that's why I said, a nine year old, his, his bia is bia, t- and he'll be mechayev a woman, a ish bemisa. That is no question. Just he doesn't have the ability to be kaina, he can't make kinyanim. So he's not kaina yibom, he's not, he's not kaina the yivama. But it, it's, a real, it's a real bia. So Rashi asked the question, and Rashi answers, uh, she was a shogi, she didn't know. She, something, she thought it's the same person, maybe the same kid, I don't know what, something. But otherwise, she's Chayiv Misa. You have to remember that. A nine-year-old, Biyasa Bia. La Lach it's a Bia. So male, she would be Chayiv Misa. If she's a Eshesh. If she's already Misyavim to A. So she's a Yivama to A. She's his wife. So she has no business being with his brother. Reb Shimon Oimer, Loi Paisel. But he holds his man of Shah. Ben Teish Hashanah V'yemechot, Shabal Yivim Toi. A nine-year-old performed evil. And then, forget that he has a brother. He himself went and went to the second wife, the Tzara. He just ruined it again. So he just ruined it for himself. He, he acted like a second brother. If his Bia is a Bia and he's quite 100%, so he's Miyabim, the first one. And the first one is his wife. The second one, that sorry, he had no business. Okay, he's over Isser, over Chaisisha. But it didn't ruin it. He's still married to the first one. And if it's be a zero, if it didn't accomplish a, a Kenyan, so it didn't accomplish a Kenyan. So he can't pass on himself. Yeah, that's it. Paisal. Can never be with him. Tanya Amalar Mishim Lecha Chamin. In Bia, Rishayin, Bia, here, Marim Shach. If the first Bia is considered a Bia 100%, then the second guy had no business being there. And if he's a little kid and we don't count his bia as anything, so then his brother, the nine year old, also didn't accomplish anything. So two zeros. Says the Gemara, like Ibn Azai. Our Mishnah can't be going like Ibn Azai, the Sanyo. Ibn Azai, oi, mer, yesh, mama, achar, mama, bishne, yivamim, viyivama, achas. See if I have the picture. Oh, here you go. Avi, you remember this guy? I think I did this in Switzerland. So, there's two cases. Shnei Yivamim v'yivam achas. Here you have two brothers, two Baldwin brothers. Shimon gives five towner $100, a ring, and so does Levi. Two of them did Maimer. So, ein achar Maimer but two Yivamim, great. What, right, again, Ruvain was married to, to the five towner. Ruvain goes bye-bye, sideways. He has two brothers remaining. Each one gave her $100. So, that's case number one. Yesh maimer achar maimer b'shnei yivam yivam achas. Ve'ein maimer achar maimer 
But here's a similar but very different case. Reuven goes bye-bye. He leaves one brother, and that one brother performs mimer on two women. You see the difference in the cases? Two men performing mimer to one woman, or one man performing mimer to two women. In this case, ain mimer acha mimer is v'yavam echad. Okay? So our Mishnah cannot go like Ben Azai. It says in the Mishnah, the Hail of Mishnah, sponsored by the own corn blue, the Zeichen Ishmael's my father, we've been to the and to the Ruchlings and Gashmins of my kids. I'm happy I forgot the first one. Ben Teisha, Shonim, Vir Mechot, Sheboa, Yivim, Toi, Vemeis. A nine year old performs Zibom, and then he dies. Choy Letzes, Veloi Misiya Bemes. Now, what's happening is, this is very similar to this case. We can talk about this case. We're going to have it in the Gemara. Here you have three brothers. I don't know why I put the Naftali here. Fine. Three brothers. Three Baldwin brothers. One of them has a hat. Three Baldwin brothers married to three strangers. They're not sisters. One of the Baldwin brothers goes bye-bye. So... Shimon, the bro- the, 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 one of the two remaining brothers, performs mimer on his wife. Then, but he, remember, he's married to Batayin. So now he has two wives. Or he has a mimer wife. Then Shimon goes bye-bye. And now what happens is that this... Oh, what happened? What? I don't know. It's, but I'm trying to see if I have a thing. Okay. I thought I had a better picture here. Oh, yeah. If you look closely, you'll see that the way I did it was this, I don't know what her name is, Batya, B, whatever. She's small by Shimon and enlarged by, by Ruvain. It doesn't matter. The point is that Tanaftali, the guy with the hat, he's getting her from two sources. He's getting her first from Ruvain. Ruvain died. It's his brother's wife, Yevama. He, he has to be Miyavimer. But also from Shimon, because Shimon performed a mimer. So in, in a way, she's Shimon's wife. In a way, she's Reuven's wife, because mimer is only the Rabbana. So since she comes to him from two sources, what's the halacha? Because it's two batim. You can't be miyam from two houses. So over here also, you have a nine-year-old who performed yibum. So is it his wife? Not really. So it's very weak. The maze and he dies. So now he's coming. The, the, his his Yavama is coming from two sources. There was a brother that died last year, and the and the youngster, the nine-year-old, was Miyabimer. So this woman is coming from the guy that died last year, and she's also she's coming to the, the remaining brother from the nine-year-old. So therefore, don't be don't be Miyabim, just be Khailats. Nasa Isha Vamez. This is interesting. If a nine-year-old marries a woman, he has no business marrying a woman. Um, look at Taisis here. Taisis says, "Vav gavdo the kinu rabban nesun lekatan mikal makam emiri the leki isura the lechashiva bias nus u mitzvah nami ikel ahasi isha levnoi katan." There's a mitzvah to marry of your young kid, but by the way, the Shulchan Aruch doesn't pass like that. It's not a mitzvah; it's a very to marry. He says, "Okay, fine." Machlag's Rishonim, basically. Is it okay to marry off your, your young child? Say it. It's not, a, it's not a get to our dates. Agobon. Nasa Isha Vameis. If this youngster married a woman, says the Mishnah, Harareza Ptura. You don't even have to do Chalitza. It's nothing. He's never married her. Bente Shashonav Yom Echot Shaba Al Yivim Toi. By the way, there's going to be a Gishmaka Agatis coming up soon. Bente Shashonav Yom Echot Shaba Al Yivim Toi. A nine year old. And then when he got older, he married another woman and he died. Says the Mishnah, If he never was with the original Yivama, once he got older, The first one gets Chalitza, but not Yibam. His real wife, the one he married when he was a Gadol, gets Yibam as well. He should he could perform Yibum even on the first one, the one he married when he was a katan. But he has to perform Chalitza on the second one, the remaining one. 
says the Mishnah, no, A nine-year-old, they have the same halacha. A nine-year-old and a 20-year-old that doesn't have simonim have the same halacha. Omar So we learned that if you come from two houses, two zikas, you do chalitza. Omar Abba, hold on, Rabban, and zika shnei yavam and michlats chalitza. Yabumi lo mi yabma. You shouldn't perform even. You should only do chalitza. Le te mehei chadikat tzara. So now, over here, look at this. In, in this case that we're showing over here from Daflamet Aleph, I think it is. Yeah. From Perik Arba Achim, as the Gemara calls it. Over here, Shimon is married to another woman. So the concern is, people might think, maybe, maybe that's the concern. People might think that Yumiyabim, and then let Shimon dies. You can be miyabim, two women who come from the same house. Nobody's going to chap that Batya is really Ruvain's ex-wife, late wife. And Batayin is Shimon's late wife. They're going to think, they're going to think that Batya and Batayin, or Bracha and Batayin, maybe she's Bracha, I forgot her name. Maybe they're, they're both coming from Shimon. And if Naftali performs even on both of them, it's a big no-no. So what we say is just do chalitz and finish, no yivim at all. So the reason why you do chalitz and yivim, it's not only in the case when there's a bat dying around, but even in the case of our Mishnah, where there's no other woman. It's as if she's coming in our Mishnah. She's coming, one woman. Forget that there's another Batayin lady. One lady. She fell, Liyibom. Her f- first husband died. And then the little guy was Miabamer. So now she's falling from two homes without another lady involved there. Even in that, it's also. Nasa Yishav Ames. Tani la adzara abonan, shaytav akatan shanasa v'meisu. A shaita and a cotton don't have a kinyan. The shisayim tours men chalitzim yim. They cannot affect a kedushin. They don't have marriage, and therefore, if they die, there's no chalitz even. But teisha mishigdil. It says in the Mishnah that what if this cotton marries a woman, the yivama, and then he goes ahead, he becomes a gadol and marries another woman when he's a gadol. So the Tanakhama holds that the first one you give chalitza to, the second one you do yibum. Yeah, let's see inside. Bentei shanim yemechad shabal yibim toy u'mishigdil nasi yishachers emes im lo yada seri shanim mishigdil her shanim chalitza v'lo yimsi abemes v'ashni yoy chalitza v'lo yimsi Okay, so the first one gets chalitza, the second one does yibum. Says Gemara v'yasu bi es bentei shah k'mayim regadol the fact that he performed yibum. On the Yavama, she had an effect of Maimer. The second one should not be able to be Misyabim. The Gdoilo. Says Rav, the way we have to learn it, Rav is not arguing with everything we said before. The, the Mishnah says that a Bia of a Katan is like Maimer. No. He's saying it's not like Maimer in every given situation. In other words, it doesn't have the power to patter evil. His Bia doesn't patter the other one. So therefore the other one needs Chalitza. No, his Bia is like Maimer by Gadol for everything, in every situation. It patters. So, so let his bia patter the other brothers. Says Gemara Tanoi. You're, everybody holds that his bia has the power of a mimer. However, there is a machlekes. What's the difference between our Mishnah and the Lamed Aleph, the Lamed Aleph, the Arba Achim? Hachtana, the Arba Achim, Gozar Mishum Tzara. So he said, 
that it has the power because of the tzara. We're concerned of the tzara. So then why didn't he mention anything about a katan? Because that whole period did not mention anything about a katan. We're not talking about a katan over there. We're talking about a gadol. So, you can't be miyabam. This woman who has two zikas by us, right? She has two zikas. She's coming from two different sources. She, her original husband, the katan. That, we're not talking about a tzara here. For a different reason. There's a passage that says, if you have two zikas, can't come from two batam. Vashmina bekatam, vodim bekadol. And our, our mission is talking about a katan, but the same Allah applies to a gadol, by the common bekatan, the bekatan kai, our whole mission, the, the whole sugi, everything, all the, look, the top word, bentesh shanam yemechad. Next mission, bentesh shanam yemechad. Everything is talking about a katan, we talk about a katan. Here we go. Agata. Omar Rebbe Lazar, Ozal Rebbe Lazar, Omar Lashmai Tzavim Midrash. Rebbe Lazar comes to Beis Medrash and he says over this, what we just learned from Rabbi Yechanan, he didn't mention Rabbi Yechanan's name. He stole the Shtikot Torah. The best way to do it, by the way, is you say, you say Shtikot Torah, I've seen this many times, Rashivas do this a lot. I, I was thinking this, thinking that, and, and all I think I was, and then I talk a found in some cipher, the whole thing. Okay, Kivaldi. Maybe yes, maybe not, who knows? But he didn't say anything. He didn't say his own shtickle turn and said, oh, I found it by Rabbi Yochanan. Nothing. He said this whole shtickle is Rabbi Yochanan. Shama Rabbi Yochanan ikbad. Bad news. Rabbi Yochanan is very, very upset with him. Why didn't you say my name? Now when Rabbi Yochanan gets upset, you know what happens? What? Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. So the island was very nervous that Rabbi Lazar is going to go bye-bye. They immediately dispatch Rebbe Rivasi. There's a story. Rebbe Rivasi in Tveria, I think, right? All the sugis, they always say they're in Tveria. There's a story in Tveria. Here's that funny picture. So a neger is this, this uh, yellow thing that, that goes into, it holds the door in place, right? It locks the door. Now, if it has a glustera, so you could use it as a mortar and pestle. You could crush stuff with it. So Mela, it's not mukta. If it's like a door, what is it called? What do you, what do you call it? Door stopper? A lock, a piece of metal that has to do with the door. It's mukta. But if it has another use, you could uh, crush stuff with it, then it's not mukta. So, they were fighting. Is it mukta? Not mukta. Think about it. In those days, no Mishnah Bura. So they're, they're fighting over Sefer Torah. It says in the Pasuk like this. It says like this. Uh, I don't know what Pasuk they were fighting over. All the halachas and Shabbos in the Sefer Torah. And they tore the Sefer Torah. It ripped. Bachamasan. In their anger. So the Gemara, so the Gemara stops for a second in the middle of the story. Chorus, okay, what? They, somebody ripped the Sefer Torah? While they were fighting, it ripped by mistake. They didn't, no one went ahead and ripped the Sefer Torah. It says, it's not better. So, anger is a terrible thing. This show that they had a, a, a fit, a, a fit of anger, it's going to turn into Avayz Kechav V'chein Hava. It says a bunch of times on Tisha B'Av, Rabbi Yosef Davis in, in Chicago, not anymore, but back in the day, he would take the Olam on a tour through the old Chicago. They used to live in the south side. And now they moved to the north side. So he would take people on Tisha B'Av, because there's a real Tisha B'Av, this tour, to see church after church in the south side. And it says, uh, congregation, I have a Hashem, and then like a Salem, like smack on top. They wouldn't even take off the brick. It was like engraved. What you can't believe what goes on. This nerevayim, what the Mung and David, and the this and the the Hebrew letters. They 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 don't have time to take to ch- chisel out the brick. They put their sign right on and the yashke whatever, and boom, right on top. But over here it says because of kas. Others say you know if you talk during uh, different times of the davening, it happens. Whatever. The Mishaburah brings that. 
So, mamish, people that dive in there, it's, they didn't even have to, it's not a generation later, it's within their, their lifetime. So, so basically he's trying to tell him in a very direct way, shouldn't be mad, because if you're mad, it's not a good thing to be bekas. It's giving him musr. You're going to be mad at Rebbe Lazar. Says the Gemara, Hadar Iqbetfei. Rebbe Yochan got even more upset. Omachav Rosanami, what, you making Rebbe Lazar my friend? Over there, it was two friends that were fighting over Sefer Torah and it ribbed Rebbe Lazar and Rebbe Yossi. They were friends. I'm not his friend. This is my Talmud, Rebbe Lazar. No, I'm not. A, uh, you didn't calm me down. Oy legabe Rebbe Yaakov Baridi. He tries. Yeshua repeated everything he said. He didn't add one word that he didn't hear from Moshe, who heard it from Hashem. You think Yeshua sat there all day long? I heard from Moshe Rabbeinu Kach. I heard from Moshe. No. He said, and everybody understood. Everybody understood it's from Moshe Rabbeinu. After Rebbe Lozit Amitcha, everybody knows Rebbe Lozit is your Talmud. He doesn't have to mention your name. Everybody knows that it came from you. You want to make me feel good? You have to pull off Rebidi's shtick, not your stuff. Whatever you're saying is not helping me. So the Gemara starts for a second. What's going on? Why was he so upset? David HaMelech asked HaKosh Baruch Hu that he should live in HaKosh Baruch Hu's tent Oilamim forever. But the Gemara Darshan's Oilamim means in two worlds. Oilamim is a plural. How could David HaMelech live in this world and that world? Oilamim David HaKosh Baruch Hu Rebbeinu Shalolam. Yiratzoin sheyoyimu dvar shmua tap of tzadik zayin omen alf. Sheyoyimu dvar shmua mepi boilam azeh. Dom Rabbi Yoichin omen shum b'shim v'yichoi. When you say over a Dvar Torah from somebody who already died, his lips move in the cave. The Marshal says it's not literal because people, uh, he says a, a different shot, that the mouth is like, uh, when people talk, that's neshama. That's, that comes from the, the person's neshama. So when you start you say the retire from him is neshama is talking in this world. But kids are David Melch asked that whatever I don't understand these things. But if somebody does, let, please let me know. His, he should have the schus in that world and this world as well. And that's why Rabbi Yehuda was upset. You're taking away that schus from me. That had no that that I'm supposed to have. You're taking it away from me. I, I don't know if you remember when you in yeshiva they used to make us do chaburus, dreadful every like month. Remember that? I had to say a chabur in front of like ten people, whatever it was. So, I hated it. So, the, this guy said a chaburah, and uh, it was my So, the guy went over to him and he said, you know, he left the Rambam with his mouth open, and Mashiach with one foot like that. So, he's like, what do, you, what do you mean? He says, he started saying a Rambam. So, as soon as he started saying a Rambam, the Rambam, his mouth started moving. He says, so he started moving. But then he started, that's not what the Rambam was saying. He's not saying shtusim. So, he left the Rambam with his mouth open. It also says, but if you say something in the name of somebody else, so maybe Gula Lailam. So Mashiach started coming. But then he realized he's saying Shtusim, so he stopped like that. Okay, great. That's what the guys told me when I, after my Chabura. Yeah. Omar Rabbi Yitzchok Bar Zero. Vitei Mashim Nezero. Micro. Where do you see this idea? V'chikich kiyayin atoyv hoylech ledoyde lemishorim. Doyvev sifse yishenim. The the lips of the sleeping, meaning those in the caver, they, they, they move. Like a pile of grapes that's ready to be pressed. They're already like, you know, semi-spoiled. Ready to, what's the Lashen? Not spoiled. Um, fermented. Fermented. Oh, the Leviya is announced back to 12 o'clock. If you, Thinking about going 12 o'clock. So when you put your finger on the grapes, it starts bubbling right away. 
Kiev Shalom and Dvar Shmuel Mepi and Boilam Azeh. So if you say him Davis Bat Kever, if you say even after a person's nifter, he has a no, whatever it means, his, his lips move in this world. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful week. Tomorrow morning, regular time, 7.15. Shimmy's Neshama should have an aliyah.